So, questions, or I show you a couple of examples, and uh, I'll ask uh, some people to participate here. Yeah. I think there was a key um, aha on my part about time and information and moving power. And I think you did a great job of illustrating an example of that. But we've spent all afternoon talking through those kind of examples. And it feels like that's a real uh, close step to achieving um, value, like short term, relatively mid midterm value, rather than we have to rebuild your whole ERP to get this outcome, right? This is some changes that can be done. And then sometimes, though, it's forced on us by the power player in the supply chain, whoever that may be in pharmaceuticals or you know, automotive or retail supply chains. And of course, what we're probably more familiar in this room about is that retail supply chain. And there's a large player involved that I spent a lot of years with. And now having spent a year on the other side of that discussion, right, with a lot of suppliers, and understanding you know, what their roles and their complexities and their costs and their timelines are. It, it's frustrating now to, to see some disjointedness um, in that full retail supply chain that doesn't have to be there. And to your point earlier before our discussion, um, blockchain could be a great solution. I don't think it will be by default unless the right players are involved in the design and the shaping of it and building that out. Um, I love this tool. Um, you know, it, it's complete. It feels very complete. Like nothing is missing here to, to take into consideration to move forward and, and make a change within multiple organizations. Yeah. Uh, but what's yes. what's a first step? What is it possible that that information piece could be the trigger or the catalyst? Maybe. In this? Well, um, can I answer that question with a couple of examples? So, so we have Jeff here. Um, so we did we did one one case, one case um, in which Jeff was part of. Okay, um, <coughs> Jeff, do you wanna do you wanna share your experience? Sure. We had a, a customer that I was responsible for last year. I'm not responsible for that customer anymore. They, I either did a good job and, and, and they moved me on, or I did a bad job and they moved me away. So, uh, <laughs> I'll shake the cobwebs off and try to explain what we were trying to accomplish here. So this this map is a heat map representation of their LTL shipments um, out of different out of their Memphis DCs. I used a red light, green light effect here that basically said within a certain mileage band of that DC, that's the market that they should serve. As the color changes to red, common sense tells me and, and you too that probably if they have a Northeast DC and a West Coast DC, why are they sending 291 shipments to California out of Memphis when they have a DC in Ontario, California? And then the cost numbers below that, that's a, a cost per pound number uh, for those LTL shipments. So you can see the further away they get from home, the more it costs them to do that. And then you scratch your head because they supposedly are full mixing center in their DCs where they have the same product in Ontario that they have in Memphis. So why are they spending, the other slide for Ontario would probably show that number as $7 and change per pound versus that $33 in California. So that was my problem, was to show them, you, you guys hired us to help you save money <coughs> in your supply chain. Here's a visual example of how we might be able to get you there. And then we took and summarized all of this in spreadsheet form and came away with about $750,000 worth of opportunity if they would just change behavior. So the the question, I mean, when when um, Jeff and Steve invited me to to participate in this in this case was how do we frame this? How do we approach the customer uh, telling this? Particularly because we want to show them. So so the, the, correct me if what I'm saying yeah. is wrong. And, yeah. And well, I'd like to add because the the reason we wanted to try to use Sebastian's tool is because. We were concerned about how to deliver this news. We had one functional area and, and they had some dis, 
not dysfunction, but disconnectedness between functional areas. And the transportation person would say, yes, let's go, let's lead the charge, let's storm the castle with this. And the DC person would say, oh, you know, this is, you know, it might shine a bad light on some of his operations or why he was not getting inventory where it needed to be and things like that. And so there was this, and, and we kind of had, when we introduce initiatives to this, we have to kind of do it with all involved. And so I was like, okay, so how are we going to position this the right way that it doesn't get shot down as soon as we put it on the table? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so basically, what uh, what what I did is I completed this with that information. I completed the canvas, uh, taking my own medicine, and say, okay, I I, I didn't. The, we we found that. I personally didn't know the answer to many questions, but the canvas asked me, helped me ask the right questions. Okay, which, which, what well, I wonder whether whether these out of region uh, LTLs were actually an indication that there was some pressure in the network, right? The pattern of where the, our customers are, the pattern where suppliers, where um, uh, our DCs are, and where um, our demand is, is changing. So maybe that's putting pressure on the network, right? And, and, and we, that's why we are having that uh, indication that the network is behaving in a, in a, in a weird way, in a, more of an unexpected way. Uh, in terms of power, we, I, I question, uh, sorry, I put it on, on me because uh, I don't want to put you on you, but I don't know how this could change afterwards. So chime in, please. So the question here was, who makes the decisions of these out of region uh, LTS. Um, maybe the person, maybe the person that is making the decision of uh, of, of, of dispatching this uh, this LTL out of region, that person is is punished if they don't deliver on time, okay, and gets no reward on on cost, or they don't even know, doesn't even know the cost. They never know the cost. So so we 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 now know that. Mm -hmm. So they never see the cost, right? So if my objective is to deliver, and I don't know the cost, uh, I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong even, right? I'm just solving the problem that I am hired to, to solve. Um, scale, well, maybe this is a problem that we, it's not yet big enough to solve, because solving the problem is more costly than, than not solving, okay? So depending where we are, we take different routes in terms of the innovation or, or the improvement opportunity. Uh, risk, um, while well, the tendency would be to eliminate these out of region LTLs, however, these out of region LTLs provide a higher level of service. So hold your horses on saying no more of this, right? Uh, a, a number of these out of region LTLs are healthy for the network and will reduce the overall cost of the network. And uh, lastly, time. I was wondering whether uh, beyond um, uh, beyond the lead time uh, between between us and the customer, there were any other lead time implications between the customer and the customer's customers. Okay, to, to have a, a full a full view of, uh, of of the picture. Well, this financial implication was a cost reduction. Okay, and the expectations we we had to set a target of uh, expected uh, number of out of region LTLs. Um, I have a couple of cases uh, more to show you. We, we are on time, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Christian? Yeah, I'm just curious. Well, well first off, I copied Jeff's tool <laughs> and used it on a few accounts, which was really helpful. But oh, nice. I want to hear about it. So, we, we talked about the Think Tank earlier. Yeah. And this is an idea and kind of a process that we go through a lot when we're asked to deliver different projects or different things like that. So I guess my question, using this tool, is it is it is the purpose of it to learn how to deliver the message the way that Steve mentioned, or is the purpose of it to like learn how to measure the feasibility of well, that project? So that's a great point, Christian. And I would say that this has been helpful in, in both of those cases, okay? And so Jeff probably wouldn't share this, but he moved on to something else, uh, you know, more sophisticated 
and uh, a CPG customer, and he now has upgraded this tool, and and he put a really nice, clean visual wrapper around it, and he put, um, um, you know, it's just like a, you know, the tools you see nowadays. Uh, there's a new tool for everything. It's like, gosh, how many more new tools can we get, especially around Christmas season? <laughs> and um, and most of them relate to how repeatable it is. How can you do more with the same tool? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So he took that advice and created this. He now calls it Optimal Origin. It has a beautiful wrapper around it and looks nice and it's replicatable monthly. Um, and so now the supply chain can take it to customer service who never really has an idea of cost to serve. It's about serve. You know, it's about getting it there uh, in full and on time. And by gosh, we got to send it from here. That's where we're going to send it from. And um, and so now this raises awareness with multiple functions, and it's replicatable, it's repeatable, and all of that combined. What you talk about, Christian? One, how to discuss it. Number two is how is it applicable in different places. The tool helped us do something with a 12-year CPG customer we've been doing with, and the quote was recently, this is the most strategic thing TransPlace has done for us uh, in the whole time we've been doing business together. Uh, and this is a customer where we've offered no less than $20 million of VIP savings in the last 12 years. And then now, out of that, we have a tool that fits most Cool. So that is awesome. Yeah, well, thank you. The Canvas really helps you to think about all of the implications around your given problem, too. And so I think that going through this process with Sebastian helped me think about more than just what was on the surface that I felt like I had solved the world with one Tableau spreadsheet or right? <laughs> visual. It doesn't replace the Tableau spreadsheet. No. So, but you have the Tableau spreadsheet, okay? You find the opportunity, you, you, you have the, the, the first analysis, and then you, you move on. Now we need to tell the story. You need, you, you need to construct the narrative to share that. So then you move to the canvas and say, do I have all the elements? Am I missing something? I mean, I didn't, I didn't go much into this, but, but what is gonna happen is, I, I use the word congruency at one point. Congruency means that you are gonna read this and you're gonna see, hey, does this make, I mean, does it fit? I mean, it seems that something's missing. Mm -hmm. So probably you're gonna go back to your analysis, to your tableau, or you're gonna say, well, maybe I should show a visual about this. I should show a map, okay? So that the story is more powerful. So I think that, that if, if, you, if you ask me, tell me one thing that the canvas does, the canvas, helps you build the, the most powerful narrative that you can based on the analysis that you are doing in other tools. I'm not replacing, I mean, with, with the canvas, you're not replacing anything else. You, you still have to do the, that analysis, okay? But it's a personal sanity check. It helps you build this complete story. So I guess as you were explaining, that, that makes a ton of sense, but as you were explaining, I was thinking of it more along the lines of, we have an ask. So again, less than the think tank, we get a lot of asks and, and GMs or whoever will ask us to, to provide different value adds in different areas. And a lot of the, one of the big challenges that we run into is trying to figure out how to organize it from the very beginning. Uh, and like that second row right there helps ask a lot of good questions to make to even verify if the ask is manageable or not. So I was thinking of it from the standpoint of like, we just got the ask. And here's how we start this process. But what you're saying is it's more along the lines of how to, to paint the picture and deliver the message. Well, yeah, but, but actually I say that, so you have the ask. Mm -hmm. To me, the ask is yeah. the value proposition. Mm -hmm. So I get the ask. If I were to com commit it to use the canvas, what I would do is you'd give me the ask. Mm -hmm. I go to the, value, to the canvas and complete the value proposition. And everything else is empty. So now I say, okay, 
to the, I mean, to be able to deliver that ask, what do I have to do? Yeah. That so goes I, in the innovation. I think it forces a comprehensive approach. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And therefore, yeah. that becomes incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. I think another way to, to say that in the upper right corner is how many P&Ls are involved here? I think about Greg Smith, not Greg, Greg Ferran coming to Walmart and spending all that time in the stores and looking at the supply chain and hiring a new EVP of supply chain and you know, his new C, uh, chief merchant. How do you get merchandising and operations uh, and logistics to work together across three big P&Ls and everybody win? And I think he's finally done it over the last couple of decades. I've seen attempts at it, but I think he's finally done it by starting with a customer and working back. You know, giving the associates a dollar an hour is extremely expensive on the world's largest single line of the world's largest single P&L. And to do that, you've got to take that much cost out. And he saw freight getting handled two, three, four times in the back room of a store and said, why are we paying all these people all this money to do worthless work? And he figured out through those trips back up in the supply chain that there was safety stock in the back rooms that wasn't really helpful. And my team got the receipt of a call directly from him in the store asking why there were so many great value man mandarin oranges or those little yeah, cans of oranges in this particular store. And we were all just praying that it was a buyer, a leftover buyer feature, right? <laughs> but in reality, it was a safety stock setting that didn't need to be there. And so the inventory in a lot of stores was excess and people were moving cases more than once. Um, off the truck and, and not off the truck into the bailer, so to speak, right? Flat cardboard. So I think he saw that. He looked at the PLs were involved and said, you know, we can't win at the store PL, which is huge, if we don't do some different things in merchandising and in logistics. And now, you know, all three of those people come to his staff meeting, I guess, um, as direct reports, and he gets to make those big PL decisions because he broke it down on who was involved. So I think it's an excellent tool. I think it's comprehensive. When you take it down one level to say, how do we start implementing or are we complete? To, to Christian's question, is my heat map, you know, who all is impacted by the seat map, which PLs, that can become a really effective, practical tool and actually start the implementation discussions to paint the full picture. This, I love this. This is amazing. Well, thank you. Um, what would make Brazil a few weeks ago when we started this process um, with the group down there? We haven't completed it yet, but one of the discussions I have with them is that, you know, in our industry, there are some things we have to do that are imposed upon us, and there are some things we investigate to see if it's something that we can or should do. Um, but this really resonated with me because at Morris, we actually use the What White Health framework to build business cases and present them, and I really like to just dive down into the next level and make sure we didn't miss pieces, which a few of you have mentioned. Um, but I think whether it's a business case, or not a business case, but a requirement that's imposed upon you, or something that you're investigating to see um, if there is the appropriate business case, either way, this still works to make sure that you don't miss anything that then introduces um, any kind of risk that's gonna make you miss your milestones. Um, or um, add in additional costs that wouldn't have been necessary had you done the right study before you, you know, started on the, the project team to execute it. Thank you. Yeah, well, to, to wrap up, um, I have, um, So, just to show you a, a different a different use, I know that that's in Spanish. It's in purpose in Spanish because it's an Argentine company, a biotechnology company, and basically they are using. Do you guys know what esparto grass is? It's a, it's a worthless grass, basically. Okay, every now and then, yeah, it, it, it is with, with terrible carbon footprint because every now and then it's in a it's in a swampy area. So that's where esparto grass is. It's a it's a um, it's a it's a swampy area. Uh, you cannot even have animals actually uh, feeding from from that grass because they cannot. Sometimes they cannot even get there unless they go when the water goes down. And uh, usually you burn them. Okay, 
horrible uh, carbon footprint. While this company has uh, genetically modified a bacteria to basically um, uh, pull the key ingredient to make uh, biodegradable uh, plastic containers, okay? So, so this guy was uh, developing, so he has the technology and we gotta build the business model. And the question, is, the question, the reason why he contacted me was, where should I install the factory? I thought that that question was like too much down the road. We had to answer a whole bunch of questions before. And, but I had to drag him from this. He, he's, he has a PhD in weed, which is the wrong type of weed, I guess, right? But, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I mean, so, so I'm just giving you the, his framework. He's a business person. He's the director of strategy for this biotechnology company. So he's coming up, he's converting what, what, what PhDs are doing in the lab and converting, the, converting that into products. He's not thinking supply chain, okay? He's thinking, trying to connect all that, all that, that, that his plate is pretty full with this. So the way I was able to bring Claudio to the dark side of supply chain and have him think about supply chain was actually putting him through the experience of completing the canvas, okay? Once the, 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 the trying to complete the boxes together forced him to focus on certain aspects that to the supply chain guy were important, okay? Where, factory location or, or warehouse location, don't worry about that. I mean, give me, let's, let's come up together with all those boxes I work on that. That's a problem that I can deal with if, if I know the five boxes that are in the how row. So that's another, another small example. I, I got more slides to show you, but I think that's, that's enough. And we're running out of time. So I open it up to, to questions if you have any further questions. That's a book cover. So um, again, I'm interested in talking to people. Uh, I'm a full-time academician, so uh, I won't do any, anything really meaningful for practitioners if I stay in the ivory tower. So I'm uh, eagerly seeking for, uh, for interaction. Okay? Sebastian, have you found more <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm working on, on, on trying to get uh, bandwidth, right? Uh, times are hard, uh, people have their plate full, and uh, following up with what we were talking before, people are solving, are, are working already with certain set of tools, right? So incorporating a new one is an effort that, that, that someone that is curious enough or has the time or has a big problem um, will, will will invite me to, to, to participate. But, uh, but again, the same way we work with you, how, how much time did you spend uh, prior to seeing the first version of the canvas I completed? A couple of hours, three hours? Probably. Four hours? So, so what, I'm, I mean, what I'm suggesting is, is tell me the story, I do the work in the office, and then and then I, I, I provide you with information, right? So, so I, I, I try to contribute to your work rather than, than taking much time from you. Um, I think we need to, as, our, as a group here, you know, we have some think tank members in, our, in the room, and I think we need to try to, to, the next thing that comes up, we need to use this and apply it and, and get Sebastian involved in that. That's how list of the next thing that I have, I want to be able to share that with you and walk through that process again. Sure. We had the round table for the demo about the money, so maybe it's okay to reach out and And uh, sorry, what, what, uh, what the, the invitation that Diana um, made to me, um, I mean, was, was an awesome project because actually we developed first uh, an alignment session with the with a customer in Brazil. Okay, so we we developed sharing expectations between 
customer and supplier, we develop a three-year roadmap, strategy roadmap. Yeah, we also want to expand it, yeah, but I think. Two, three years. Um, with things that were low-hanging fruits, that were medium size, medium effort, and, and things that were, I mean, we had them for a long time, or there are big opportunities. Mm-hmm. And um, the idea was afterwards, break up in, in groups and tackle a couple of those uh, biggest opportunities and use the canvas to do uh, an exercise jointly between customer and supplier. Uh, the, the alignment expectation session was pretty, pretty rich and, uh, and, and, and took lo- longer than, than expected, so we didn't get to that second part, but that was, that was the plan. Well, and in fact, I got some feedback last night um, that the resulting thought it was so impactful that the resulting thought that just shows us that um, they weren't just nice and polite we were there saying, oh, thank you, yes, this was valuable, but I can tell by the fact that they're now presenting this at the, at the global level that they truly meant it and weren't just being polite to Sebastian and I when we were there. So that's the good feedback. Thank you. <laughs> Did you say three-tier or three-beer strategy? I could <laughs> That might be a really good idea. We can do that. After all, I, 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 I work for um, the state of Arkansas, so only after 5 p.m. No, no one, no one specified the time zone. So, <laughs> well, anyway, thank you so much uh, for having me. One last question: I'm planning to try to uh, get more visibility on the OSAR roundtable. So, I recorded this presentation. Uh, have we said anything that is confidential that should not be uh, on YouTube? Are we all comfortable? Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Transplace, uh, for having me and, and for hosting the OSA. Awesome.